So far, every SteamWorld game since the dawn of time has been available on a console. And the upcoming city builder, SteamWorld Build, will be no different. At least that's what the script says. I wouldn't know, I'm just some voice actor. So what are the challenges of venturing into the city builder genre on consoles? And how did they make it so darn good? Find out right now on SteamWorld Telegraph. Well, howdy there, and welcome to the show. I'm your host, Brian Sigurdsson, and here in the thunderful offices of Gothenburg, Sweden, I'm joined again by Elin Svensson and the wonderful Adam Vassé from the station in Karlshamn. Today, we're going to be talking about making or bringing SteamWorld Build to consoles, and that is uh, something that we really want to go into, because it's not very obvious to make a uh, city builder for um, for consoles. And so, welcome back, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. So guys, could you tell us a little bit about yourselves and what you do at the station? Adam, do you want to go first? Sure, man. Uh, so my name is Adam and I am the producer of SteamWorld Build, uh, which means that I'm basically managing, uh, yeah, all the, the, the development team, I would say. Sounds like a lot of work. I mean, uh, how about you, Elin? Uh, what do you do? Uh, I'm the associate producer of Steam Mobile, so I work really close with Adam, managing the team and the project. Right. Well, it takes two, I guess. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> it really does. I mean, today we're going to talk about like bringing Steam World Build to consoles, which is a thing in itself, isn't it? Because with, I mean, there are city builder mechanics definitely in Steam World Build. We can't get away from that. And it's typically you would play a city builder on on PC, right? Or, also, or on mobile, because yeah, the mechanics are there. But you very rarely see it on, on a console. I mean, so did you know from the start that SteamWorld Build was going to come to consoles? Yes, so actually we did. Uh, or I would put it like that. We decided to go for, for all platforms because we, we didn't want to punish anyone for invested in the wrong platform. You know what I mean? So, so our game should be available for everyone. Uh, so, uh, so we took that decision from there, I would say. Yeah, and we have really hardcore uh, console uh, players at the office, so we had all the knowledge we needed in the right. team. Right. So historically, I mean, we've seen city builders on consoles before, but there aren't that many of them. I mean, why do you think that is? I think it's mainly because of the UI, and it's so much easier to navigate in the city builder uh, with uh, a PC with my mouse and keyboard, uh, and because you have to think and iterate so much with the UI on the consoles because it doesn't really work the same. So now you mentioned UI twice. What is UI? What, what does that mean? The user interface, like for city builders, for example, it's all these navigations, uh, pop-up windows, all the information, the toolbar, and how to navigate, you know, clicking on the houses, placing stuff in game. Uh, with mouse and keyboards, it's super straightforward. You just click and then you're done. <laughs> but on a console, <laughs> yeah, but basically. <laughs> yeah. And, I mean, what about the controls? Do you, do you have to make any, any compromises to make that work? Not really, since we uh, cross-developed everything from the start. So we didn't really have to compromise because we had it in mind from the start. So the hotkeys work on all the controls. Uh, so it will be a smoother experience as it would be for uh, someone who's playing it on PC. Yeah, and in addition to that, we also did a lot of playtesting uh, on the uh, gamepad from the start. So, uh, so we had to make all the adjustments early on in the, pr in the production, so nothing is like forced uh, afterwards, if you know what I mean. What would you say have been the design challenges uh, in, in designing the, the UI? I think one of the biggest challenges for us has been um, that we didn't want to design two completely different UIs, depending on if you're playing with a mouse or with a gamepad. Uh, so, so basically, like the things that you do with, with a mouse is pretty straightforward, right? Because you click on things that, that you want to deal with, but on, the, on a gamepad, that is not uh, so easy. 
So we implemented something that we call uh, tool select mode and uh, world select mode, which is basically in tool select mode, you uh, navigate through the menus or the UI and in, in world select mode, you can interact with, uh, with the 3D environment in, in the game. Okay, so the UI, the user interface, looks the same on PC and uh, consoles, but, uh, but it works differently because it needs to be optimized for console. That's, I get it. How do you go from this, how do you go from tool mode to world mode? Does the, does the game understand that intuitively or how does that work? We have something called hotkeys. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that lets yeah. you swap between these two. Uh, yeah. And yeah, then the absolutely. game cleverly understands what you're about to do and you don't have to move around so much. Yeah, hopefully. So <clears throat> for me, I feel that SteamWorld Build is, is an adventure game masquerading as a city building and dungeon crawling game. <laughs> I mean, what do you think uh, sets SteamWorld Build apart from, from other city builders? I would say it's exactly what you said. It's a, it's not really a city builder, but it, it, it is a city builder and a resource management game. Yeah. Uh, but most f first and foremost, an adventure, as right. all Steam World games. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent agreed. Uh, I mean, it's um, it's something special. I would say because if you expect a pure city builder, it's not what you're going to get you will get something more. You right. will get a city builder and more. So, can we talk about the specifications of the game? I mean, how many frames per second is the game going to run at? And what's the resolution going to be like? Well, the game is going to be released on quite a lot of platforms and the specs are quite different. So, maybe we could show a list? Well, let's show a list then and read the specs. Here we go. So, the PlayStation 4, Xbox One and Nintendo Switch will run at 30 frames per second. And the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series S and X will run at 60 frames per second. And the Nintendo Switch will run at 30 FPS as well. Thanks, guys. So, is there anything you'd like to add to, uh, to the audience? Please. Yeah, actually. So... The game will be available... On all platforms... On December 1st... This year. <laughs> <laughs> And now for the community segment. We've got Luke Hamilton, who's standby, ready to show you some cool stuff from our Twitch stream. So without further ado, take it away, Luke. Hiya, I'm Luke, and I do the Thunderful streams on Twitch. We're live Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. We're playing a whole bunch of SteamWorld Build over the next few days, so come and say hi. You can find the stream times and links in the description, and I'm looking forward to meeting you. All right, and now we got, for the development update, something very special. I haven't seen this before, so I'm very excited about this. Uh, our producer, Alex, he has uh, put together a few prints for me to look at of custom controllers that we did a giveaway for uh, earlier in November. These controllers are made by Extreme Consoles, and uh, we'll be ha having a look at them. First, we go for the Xbox controller. And yeah, I haven't seen this, so let's see what it's all about. All right. This looks excellent. Well, obviously it's SteamWorld build themed. And uh, yeah, you can tell that it has sort of the, the guards from, um, from SteamWorld build. It's, we got that theme in the, in the body of the, of the work of this controller. Oh. Now let's have a quick look at what the PlayStation one looks like. All right, here we have a slightly different theme for this one. This looks really excellent. Ah, oh, I wish you could see the details. It's, uh, it's got all the scratches that you want. And obviously up here you have the, um, the engine, uh, like the, <laughs> the, the steam furnace at the top. Oh, this looks delightful. I don't know which one I like the most. And finally, we'll have a look at what the Switch controller looks like. Excited for this, come on. Oh! <laughs> What is this? <laughs> really? <laughs> okay, I'll, g I'll need to figure this one out. Okay. Hmm. Honestly, I wasn't pre <laughs> prepared for this. Oh, here we go. From Extreme Consoles. Looks like this. Wow. <laughs> Card from Extreme Consoles. Wow, this is... I feel we're really plugging them. And here is... Here are the Joy-Cons. Oh, wow. For 
the Switch version. Oh man. All right, check that out. It's, we have, I hope you can see that. That is, that's just beautiful. I love the color scheme of this. It really goes really well with with SteamWorld build, the way it looks. So I think I'm just gonna keep these actually, Alex, and, uh, and thanks a lot. And that concludes this episode of SteamWorld Telegraph. Brian would go on to thank the participants and immediately following this episode's end, run a full marathon barefoot. That's what the script says anyway. And until they stop paying me, I'll keep reading this nonsense out loud. The end.